First story. OP ran away from home after entitled family supported his sister's abuse and sang him and getting pregnant twice. Now eight years later, OP's wife contacted his family and tried a forced reconciliation. OP got the whole family arrested, rescuing his estranged kids' nephews from being treated the same. I 24 m recently have been having trouble. My fiancé Emmy 22 f has been speaking to my family, whom I've been NC with for eight years after I ran away. For context, I have an older brother Eric 30 m and an older sister Glenda 28 f and during our childhood, Glenda would physically, emotionally, and mentally abuse me. And while I have never had the strength to confess this, she had also sawed me when I was 10, and she was 14. It lasted until I was 14, and she was 18 when she ended up getting pregnant. Around this time, our family, while not happy about the pregnancy, accepted and helped her. While I was horrified, and after she gave birth to twins, I couldn't look at them without crying. As I knew what they were the products of, and after she had them, she began abusing me again. The reason I never said anything is that she had taken numerous photos of me and threatened to ruin my life with them if I said anything, and after the twins were born, she threatened to harm them. Despite them being the product of her assault on me, I didn't want them to be hurt, so I kept my mouth shut. Then when I turned 16, she got pregnant again, and this time, I don't know, I just broke and I ran away, going NC with everyone. But recently Emmy has been speaking to my parents, brothers, and my sons and daughters as they want to be a part of my life. Glenda was arrested and imprisoned for attempting to abuse another boy who looked very much like I did when I was younger. Emmy has been pushing me to forgive them for letting her hurt me, but the full truth of what she had done to me and seeing the kids honestly gives me a panic attack whenever I think about it. Even now my hands are shaking so much I can barely type this. I know they don't know about her assaulting me, especially for as long as it did, but they knew and saw he beat me, her berate me, and so much more but never did anything. Emmy believes that holding all of this in is unhealthy, and I should at least speak with them to close the door. But I can tell she wants me to try to reconcile with them. I don't know what to do and really need help. What do I do? Edit. Emmy doesn't know about the saw I endured. She only knows about the other abuse Glenda put me through. Just realized I don't think I clarified that. Update. Before anything, I want to thank everyone for their support and kind words. They mean a lot, and I am really grateful for all of them. Honestly, this situation has changed, and I'm not sure what will happen next. Let me explain. So I sat down with Emmy, telling her we needed to have a serious talk. When we did, I began and told her the full extent of the abuse I went through. As well as the fact the kids are mine. When she heard the full extent, she just broke down and began to cry. She hugged me and begged me for forgiveness. I just held her and stayed quiet. After a while, I asked her if she had reached out to my family and she told me they had reached out to her. Apparently my brother is a co-worker with Emmy's aunt, and he saw a family photo I was in with their family. That's how they found her, and they began trying to get her to help us reconcile by emotionally manipulating her by having the kids beg her to help them. She also explained that Glenda had been given a lot longer sentence than I thought, as it was more than one victim. There were at least three from what I know, and she also had a lot of CP, which made me remember how she had taken photos of me when she was assaulting me, I ended up having a panic attack from that, and Emmy just stayed with me, doing her best to help me. After I recovered, I told her that I didn't want to see them again, but she asked me a question that I didn't know how to answer. She asked me about whether or not I wanted to meet my kids. I honestly didn't know, as I know they're completely innocent, but the way they were conceived. Not to mention the shock of learning who I am and how they were born. While I said this, Emmy went over to her desk. I looked at her confused, and she took out a small envelope. She held it out, and when I asked what it was, she told me it was from the twins Vincent and Aren, and they asked her to give it to me. When I heard that, I was shocked and just looked at it. I just stared at it and thought it was going to be a letter about them missing their mom or wanting to meet their uncle. But when I finally opened it, I was in shock. It explained that they knew I was their father, what their mother had done, and revealed that my parents and brother also knew. They expressed a desire to meet me as our family had been hurting them as well. But thankfully the week before, Glenda planned to teach them something. She was arrested, and neither she nor our family ever hid what they were the product of after I got away. They ended the letter by them calling me dad and asking me to help save them and their little sister Elizabeth from our family. After reading the letter, Emmy and I were in shock. I didn't know what to do, but I just looked at Emmy, who looked at me. She and I ended up having a long discussion, and we made a decision. We're going to be contacting a lawyer to see what our options are to get custody of them. 
I know that this means I'm going to have to face my past and everything in it. But I'm not going to let the kids, my kids, go through anything like what I did. Emmy's family all supports us, and I've begun opening up to my therapist about the saw. They knew I was keeping some stuff secret, and they suspected it was saw-related. But after explaining the whole situation, they were shocked. I told them what we were going to do, and they have begun getting me on new medication and giving me new ways to handle my trauma and emotions. We have a meeting in two days with a lawyer. Thankfully, Emmy's parents were able to get us in contact with a friend of theirs who specializes in this type of case. They were made aware of the full extent, and I don't really know why, but hearing that the kids, my kids, were being mistreated, were going to suffer what I had. It's made talking about everything, not so much easier, but, I don't know, it more like my desire to help them is even greater than the trauma and pain of what happened. Emmy's parents, and my therapist, said it was my parental instincts, and being a good person. I don't know though, although before I left I did spend time with Vin and Irene. I keep remembering when they were babies and little kids, seeing their first steps, their first words, all of it. And when I remember that, I get a weird feeling in my chest. I don't know what it is or what will happen, but I know I want to save them and Elizabeth. So I will, regardless of what I have to do. Don't let them suffer like I did. And as for my family, well, I think Emmy said it best. They can beg and try all they want, but all their words will go on deaf ears, because neither God nor the devil himself have any mercy for them, and neither will we. Update. So to begin with, Emmy and I spoke with Jacob, the lawyer that Emmy's parents put us in contact with. We told him everything, and the first thing we did was contact CPS. The kids were taken away, and my parents and brother were all arrested. Though not without incident, as my brother apparently thought it was a good idea to attempt to use Vin as a hostage to get away, which worked for about 10 seconds before he got tackled by a police officer whom he tried to fight, and ended up getting roughed up a good bit. Emmy and I did see them as well as the kids. The kids immediately ran to me with us hugging and crying. My father then managed to get away from the officer holding him and ran to attack them. I ended up taking a single kick to the head before he was taken down via taser. I did go to the hospital, though nothing serious. Emmy's father just joked about how he was only a danger to those that couldn't defend themselves. During this time, I also learned something that may shed some light as to what caused Glenda to become like she had. Our father is actually a registered predator and had assaulted a young girl before he met our mother. So for the comments asking if Glenda was abused as a child. Given this information, I honestly believe she very well was. We also learned my father and brother both had a large amount of CP on their computers. If you're curious about my mother, well, something I hadn't mentioned due to not really considering it important, till now was the fact my mother is 12 years younger than my father. She is from another country, and we were always told they got married after dating for six years. Originally, this wasn't an issue to my knowledge, as we were told they had gotten married when my mother was 26. But no, they had gotten married overseas when she was 16 years old. Meaning if the other info my parents said was true, they were together when my mother was 10 which would also imply the possibility of Glenda being abused around that age as well. So for those who were thinking of that possibility, yes, she very likely was. After that revelation, we informed her lawyer and the prosecutor just to see if anything positive could be done. Right now there is no update there, but we did have the paternity test done, and with the assistance of the CPS people putting it on the fast lane as they put it, we should have the results sometime soon. Thankfully, due to my job being one I can do from home and us, having a fairly large home that we had bought and renovated, as well as me being the only family the kids have in the country. Once paternity is established, getting them shouldn't be a problem, according to the CPS worker, and officially getting parental rights custody should be fairly easy as well, though it will likely take a little while. I have been able to visit Vin, Irene, and Elizabeth, which Emmy and I have been doing. They're so incredible, and Elizabeth reminds me so much of my grandmother, as she looks so similar to her with such a similar kindness. Vin and Irene also look a lot like me, which did bring some memories up, but I forced them back. Anyway, that's where we are right now. Oh, also, I wanted to mention a few things. Emmy and I are in couples counseling, as this has been a lot happening with a lot of emotions. We had a long talk, and decided it was for the best to find outside help. I did receive a DM asking about what I'll do when Glenda gets out of prison, and honestly, I have no idea. From what I heard, it won't be for at least a good while so I'm not bothering with that right now. Another DM I received was asking about my extended family, and the only family I knew was my grandmother, who passed away when I was six. She had attempted many times to save me, but wasn't able to. However, whenever she was around, 
She would always treat me with love and kindness. So she's honestly the only family from earlier generations that I am fond of. Second story. My entitled Sil stole my 2,000 euros and is calling me cruel and selfish for wanting it back, turning the whole family against us. She has now made my mill's funeral about herself after causing her death. This story takes place in a major city in Germany. My Sil 55 and her lazy arse husband 57 are constantly broke and keep on whining about it. For more than 10 years, they have been coming crawling to family with sob stories and expecting their bills to be paid. Their family debts are already in the six figures. My Sil is a physiotherapist, and her husband is someone who, because of his skin color and age, thinks he doesn't have to apply for a job because he wouldn't get one anyway. When asked why she or her husband wouldn't work, my Sil always replies that she has back pain and her husband has bad knees, is over 50 and black, and there are no jobs for them. Which is absolutely not true, as I was personally working in a job agency at the time and suggested lots of suitable jobs to him which he didn't apply for because the hourly wage of 20 euros an hour was supposedly too low, since this resulted in a full-time, monthly salary of 3 200 euros before tax. There was no argument for getting up from the couch for him. Well, it's summer. My sister's birthday is coming up. We're having a family barbecue together. My sill calls us all together and makes a speech. She would like to buy a car and wants 8,000 euros for it. And then another 3,000 euros for a luxury electric massage mat. The money would also be paid back, this time. We ask her why she needs a car, and how she would pay for the maintenance, taxes, gas, and repair costs for the car. My entitled sill. My husband is American, and he doesn't want to travel by public transportation, and is used to driving. And my husband needs the car to visit his friends, as traveling by public transport was unbearable for him, and he doesn't feel comfortable. In response to the further question of how they were going to finance the car outside of the purchase costs, without money and jobs, my sill got snippy and started insulting us all. We were all mean to her and just wanted to put her down with our questions and show her that she was less than us and that she had offered to pay the money back. It ends with my entitled sill bursting into tears and running into the house. Since I had to go into the house myself, I don't hear my sill crying, as I expected, but talking on the phone to her husband who wasn't at the barbecue. I can hear my sill complaining to him that all of us are tormenting her, patronizing her, and talking down to her. My sill comes back into the garden with a smug smile, puts her phone on speaker, and holds it out to us. My brother-in-law yells, Just watch it. I'm going to F you all up, you a holes. Just talk SHT about me behind my back and make my wife cry. I hate you all. You all stink. And I'll F you up. My sill is there the whole time with a satisfied grin. A while later, it's my sill's birthday. And we, the doormats we were back then, want to fulfill my sill's heart's desire. A car, by giving her a car-sharing deal of 100 euros. Of course, no good deed goes unpunished. We give her the 100 euro deposit, which she can then use. It's in her name, and only she is insured. We explain everything to her. She understands and agrees to abide by the contract. She also promises that she will pay the costs incurred from her account, once the 100 euros have been debited. Everything is fine. Of course my sill lied, didn't change the account details and of course let her deadbeat husband drive. Within a few months, the bill was amounting to 2,000 euros. When I noticed this gap in our account, I immediately cancelled access to our account and confronted my sill. She ignored me and didn't respond to calls, texts, or emails, but complains to my husband her brother about me that his mean and nasty wife who doesn't begrudge them, the poor, their car, pass sill. I haven't been able to sleep for three nights because your wife, dear brother, wants her money back. That's so outrageous. Her pa's husband replies to my email a few weeks later and calls me a b-word and a witch that he's going to beat me up so that I finally shut up and stop nagging him and his wife about money. I apparently also need therapeutic help because I've gone crazy. He keeps threatening me that I'll soon get a few punches if I don't finally shut up. It goes so far that this aggressor ah turns up outside our house and tries to intercept and intimidate me so that I stay quiet. Did I mention that this pass has already had several charges and court cases for violent confrontations? I report him to the police, only to have the rest of the family against me, berating me as to why I would mess with him. Don't poke the bear. I'm told that I'm to blame for the whole mess, and that me and my husband have enough money, and should let the poor relative have it. My mill even goes so far to that, she would go begging from the family, so that we greedy people would get our money back, so that we would finally stop annoying everyone. Of course my sill and Bill don't pay anything back, 
nor do they apologize. Nothing. They are smear campaigning us full throttle. My husband's family rolls their eyes at me when I bring up the subject and keeps on telling me that it's my own fault and that I overreacted with my complaint. I'm even told that my reaction was extremely over the top and that I am the ah rebuke from the family in law from left, right, above, and below. It ends with my sill and Bill turning up at my father in law's birthday party a couple of months later and making a scene, saying that they are mistreated and bullied in the family and that we would all soon see where that would lead to. Again, the famous threats from my pos bill. My bill attacks all the men in the family at this event and threatens to hit them and tries to provoke my husband in particular to get into a fight with him. My pos bill has no success with this. My pos bill is such a sucker that he only pushes my other brother-in-law's wife to the floor because he doesn't dare to approach men. Such a loser. Meanwhile, my sill shouts at me that I can be held personally responsible for the fact that the family is now destroyed and everything is in shambles. She mockingly asks me if I am proud of my destructive work. My bill storms up to me shortly afterwards and shouts that he would do anything to protect his family and will smash my face in. I call the police. When the police siren is heard, Bill and Sil flee the scene. Meanwhile, after three long years, we got the money back from my mill, as she had condescendingly offered to go begging so that we would stop nagging about the money. She was grumbling, kicking, and screaming but we now have the stolen money back from her. She saved her grown-up, unreliable daughter's butt. My thieving sill recently came scratching at our door again to announce that she had severe depression because of the way we had treated her. I wonder, could it rather be that she has a shtty, lazy husband who is on her back and picks fights with everyone he meets? Evidently, there was so much negativity coming from me personally that she needed to go to a special clinic to get treatment for her depression. I told her to get lost and that she should tell her sob stories to someone else. My husband also told her that he no longer had time for her. I can understand that the family in law felt it was ridiculous and not worth mentioning that we had been robbed of 2,000 euros. Previously, my sill had stolen a whopping 20,000 euros from her own daughter. It was her daughter's college fund. When the daughter asked her mother where the money was, she just shrugged her shoulders and said, I had bills to pay. I am now full NC with the in-laws. My husband is VLC. I'm finally free of those pests. Unfortunately, I have to say that my husband's family with the exception of him are rubbish. They cover up intra-family thefts, tolerate verbal, physical, and emotional violence, and practice perpetrator victim reversal. I will never sit down at the same table with them ever again. Update. The saga never ends. My mother-in-law recently passed away. My pa's sister-in-law and my pa's brother-in-law were at the funeral. Although my pa's brother-in-law made it clear to my mother-in-law that he didn't like her and despised her. Although all the mourners except my pa's sister-in-law had previously asked him not to come because he didn't respect the deceased, he strutted into the cemetery chapel with his head held high and sat down in the front row. The front row was only for blood relatives. My pa's sister-in-law even had the cheek to shout at the mourners and relatives who didn't want to see her pa's husband, that she was the firstborn of the deceased, and therefore had privileges and could of course bring her husband with her. She had the sole right to decide how the funeral service should be conducted. I think, deep down, my pa's brother-in-law considers himself to be the German version of a pimp named Slickback. His funeral outfit consisted of a dark blue polyester pinstripe suit, not the elegant version, but the mobster version, sunglasses, a medium blue Stetson hat made of fake fur, and a walking stick with a fake silver knob. Cheap and inappropriate pimp style to the nines for a funeral. He probably needed it to stand out because he had been muzzled by the mourners for the funeral. The funeral itself was quiet. Except that Pa's brother-in-law didn't even go to the grave and just sat there glaring at the mourners, demonstratively turning away from the people who approached him and refusing to shake their outstretched hands. Why did he even come? When the mourning party broke up, a gathering was planned in the closest family circle, without my Pa's brothers-in-law and Pa's sister-in-law. Unfortunately, my deceased mother-in-law has an older sister who was of course privy to the plans that only the immediate family circle was invited who invited all the guests present, whether family or not, in a completely unplanned and unarranged manner. Of course, my pa's sister-in-law and her pa's husband felt invited free meals. Yeah, as these are people who lack all decency, sensitivity, and manners, my sister-in-law, including her youngest daughter, found it appropriate on the spot to berate my husband her brother for not wanting her husband at her mother's funeral. Mother and daughter were yelling like banshees in the middle of the street for all the neighbors to hear, demanding it was 20 minutes after the funeral. 
The grave hadn't even been shoveled yet. That my husband apologized for the disinvitation of my pa's brother-in-law immediately and on the spot. My pa's wannabe pimp brother-in-law watched this with relish and enjoyed the spectacle that his wife and daughter were putting on in his name. Finally, he got the narcissistic supply he had been missing for so long. Yelling at my husband, my mother and daughter continued to move towards the location and also yelled at my husband that he was crazy to allow his wife me to write a fake police report against her dear innocent husband and family man. My pa's sister-in-law's daughter 18 years old treated her uncle my husband, who had just buried his mother, like a piece of SHT, insulted him, flipped him the bird, and called him crazy and out of his mind. My pa's brother-in-law watched his daughter with satisfaction and pleasure. This devil has achieved his goal. His poison flows now in the veins of his wife and daughter. The funeral was a wonderful day for him. Two psychologists have identified my pa's brother-in-law as not only a malignant narcissist, but a sociopath. Additionally, I hold my pa's sister-in-law partly responsible for the sudden death of my mother-in-law her mother. My mother-in-law had lung cancer and therefore had difficulty breathing. Three days before her death, she had phoned her daughter my pa's sister-in-law and begged her to finally apologize to me and my husband for the stolen money so that peace could finally return to the family. My pa's sister-in-law beat up her mother so violently that my other brother-in-law had to intervene. As the mother began to ventilate so violently due to her daughter's vicious verbal attack, that an ambulance had to be called to resuscitate her. Two days later she was dead. Third story. Entitled parents allowed OP's golden child brother to bully and assault her all her life. Now he has ruined OP's wedding and destroyed the work relationships she built over the past seven plus years. Still, the family demands that she forgive him without any consequences. So OP cut ties with her family and went NC. I don't know if this sub is okay with trigger warnings, but this post has some physical abuse. I am also using a throwaway just in case my family finds this. My brother Austin fake name, and I were really close until I was about 12, and he was 14 when he started being physically abusive toward me. I want to clarify that he was never sod with me. My memories of being a teenager are that I would go to school, get bullied horribly and sexually harassed by my male peers, then I would come home, and Austin would pick fights with me in order to beat the crap out of me. He's a big guy, already 5'10 inches at age 14, 200 pounds. I was always quite a petite girl. I have to say this because my family keeps bringing it up. I was pretty mouthy as a kid. Austin used to say mean SHT to me, basically reiterate what my bully said. I would retaliate by saying something mean to him, and then he would punch me hard in the ribs or kick me hard in the thighs, and rarely punch me in the face. My parents would hear both of our sides of the story, see my bruises all over, and then tell me, well, you shouldn't have called him stupid, or, you should just learn to keep your mouth shut. Here's just a random assortment of things Austin has done to me. When I was 12, he got pissed at me and threw me against a wall so hard that the drywall caved in. He once threw me off the trampoline onto my head, causing me to have torticollis, and I still have neck problems to this day. When I was 16 and Austin was 18, my parents were out, and my brother and I got into a fight over who got to use the computer, and he ended up kicking me in the ribs and causing one of my ribs to break. When I was 22 and home after graduating college, my brother got pissed at me for not letting him use my computer. And he assaulted me with a desktop computer power cable, held me down, and whipped me with it until I bled. And somehow in this scuffle I broke my ankle, which also still causes me pain to this day. And last, just to say that this behavior hasn't stopped. He has threatened to hurt me as recently as this past Christmas because he didn't like something I said. And he joked that he's still the same old brother I always knew, which terrified me to my core. Throughout all this, my father 75 has especially defended Austin and made sure that no repercussions happen due to any of this behavior. Austin has assaulted co-workers and ex-roommates, not to mention one of his ex-girlfriends, and my dad has made all of those problems go away. My dad, in all respects, is a really nice guy. He has never threatened anyone. He has never once laid a hand on me, and yet he has never allowed any consequences to occur due to Austin's violent behavior, even with me. So, Austin wasn't on his best behavior a month ago at my wedding, and he kept bothering all my guests. The worst thing is that he harassed one of my business associates Amanda, and I ended up losing one of the biggest deals of my professional careers. Amanda and her husband were helping me with a huge project, and were making a lot of progress before the wedding, and then they ghosted me. Amanda sent me an email a few days ago, saying that she didn't want to work with me anymore, because she and her husband felt unsafe at my wedding and that I was directly responsible for making them feel unsafe by letting my violent,
scary brother have unlimited access to our free bar. Amanda hasn't told me what he said or did, and Austin had blacked out, so he has no idea either. But she implied vaguely that my brother wouldn't leave them alone, and then he threatened them. I can't be too sure what happened though. So, everything got messed up. Austin and I have been fighting on the phone and via Facebook chat. My brother has sent harassing texts, sometimes as many as 40 in 10 minutes. I'm not innocent of saying mean, hurtful stuff, and I deeply regret the things I've said to him. My dad is older. He just wants us to be together and have one happy family like when we were kids. He is grief-stricken that I won't talk to Austin, and I told them I'm not coming home this Christmas because of Austin. My father is saying that he can't get out of bed anymore, and that he can't do anything because he is so torn up about this, and it's affecting his health. The biggest thing is that my family thinks that I should just get over everything. Being abused by my brother has left me with physical pain that I live with to this day, and this deep emotional stuff that will broadside me at the most random times. I forgave him a lot before, but it keeps happening over and over, and each time I feel like I'm trapped and terrified. I shake, I throw up. It's horrible. How should I proceed? Is it crazy to just pretend like everything is okay for the rest of my dad's life? Should I just suck it up and go home for Christmas, knowing that Austin will be there? Am I really crazy for cutting my brother out of my life because of my wedding? I am so confused and just too exhausted to know my next step here. Edit. Just wanted to add here that my parents and brother live in a different country, more than a thousand miles away. Just for people who keep suggesting a restraining order. I would 100% do it if I lived near them. Update. Just since it's hard to read everything below. I deactivated Facebook and blocked my family's phone numbers yesterday. My husband has blocked them on Facebook but hasn't had a chance to block them on his phone. My brother physically abused me growing up. My dad never reprimanded him for the behavior. My brother ruined my wedding and one of my business relationships. And now my family wants me to forgive him. Update. My original post had a lot of really helpful responses. When I posted, I was at my wit's end, emotionally distraught. And I was very confused because I was actively being manipulated by my abusive family. My husband is working really hard these days, so I couldn't talk to him. But hearing that everyone unanimously agreed that my brother abused me, and that my parents enabled him really helped me to put everything in perspective. I blocked my family on my phone, and then all of a sudden a bunch of people were crawling out of the woodwork to get me to make amends, so I changed my phone number, and then I deactivated my Facebook account. My husband also blocked everyone and blocked some of their phone numbers. He has been very busy on a project at his high-profile, stressful job, so when he told them to stop contacting him, they actually did. The fact that they instantly respected his wishes really made me angry. I actually saw Amanda briefly at a networking event a few days ago, which was very lucky. She was wasted at the event, and I didn't tell her about how my brother abused me because it was not the right time, but she told me the story from my wedding that caused her to cut ties. My brother Austin was blackout drunk and making a fool of himself. Everyone was keeping their distance from him. But Amanda's husband James is so nice that he decided to chit-chat with Austin. James told Austin that he is a veteran, and my brother got up in his face about being part of the problem. My brother argued about political stuff. Just to let you know, my brother doesn't even live in the same country as James and has no connection to the politics of the country I currently live in. James got angry and told my brother to back off, and then my brother threatened both James and Amanda with physical violence. Amanda was in no way involved in this conversation, but my brother said some really horrible stuff to the both of them and they left immediately. I was on my honeymoon a day later, so I didn't know the scope of the damage my brother did at my wedding until I got back. Amanda said that she is still on the fence about working with me, which is fair, but she also said that she needs my project to move to the next step of her career, so it's likely that we will make amends, and I can explain to her what is really going on with my family. I didn't say in my last post, but I have known Amanda as a friend for seven plus years, and I know her well, so I think she will be sympathetic about my past. The biggest change in my life in the past week is that I got to talk to my husband about what happened at the wedding. I told him about how much I hate my brother, which he knows all about. But I guess I never made it clear to my husband that my brother physically abused me from age 12 to 22. He knew about the time my brother broke my ankle, and that's it. So he thought that my brother had a moment of anger and had never acted that way before. I didn't even realize I hadn't told my husband that Austin threw me off the trampoline, broke my ribs or that he used to hit me regularly for years. He also didn't know that my parents enabled the abuse. He told me he is never seeing my brother again, 
and that he will personally hire a lawyer in my home country to make sure that my brother is not able to adopt children in the future. He told me that he is going to help me in all the ways he can to make sure that I feel safe in the future. I am really lucky to have my husband. So, I never mentioned this in the original post, but I have Asperger's. I did extensive therapy throughout my life, but I never addressed my abuse with my therapists because we were too busy dealing with my autism traits. Now, in retrospect, I realize that certain things, like my self-harm in adulthood and my depression, are directly linked to being an abuse survivor. I never told my therapists what was happening in my house. I was way too scared that I would get in trouble with my family. I always felt a bit terrified of my brother, mom, and dad. And now I realize that my brother was the golden child, and I was the kid who did everything wrong. I'm really happy I have gone out of contact with these people. I realized a lot of things about them all in the past nine days and I have become aware of the years and years of manipulation. They have been trying to get in contact with me, but I feel like I hadn't thought about them in days until my friend's upcoming wedding reminded me that they were still a problem. It was a very nice, dreamy feeling to be free of them. As a conclusion, I would also like to say that I finally have good enough health insurance where I can pursue therapy on a long-term basis for PTSD and other issues. I feel very good about it, and I'm glad that there is so much support for therapy on Reddit because I may not have had the courage to pursue it if there wasn't so much support on my post. Thank you so much. TLDR. I went no contact with my family after my brother abused me. My work relationship may be salvageable. My husband finally knows the scope of my childhood abuse. And I am seeing a therapist. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.